Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the A to B podcast, part two of our uh, two-parter with uh, Julio Far- uh, Parm. Um, today, we are going to be resuming our conversation whenever it comes to recruiting duty. Essentially, I want to make sure that we start uh, by introducing my beautiful co-host, Barry Bull. What's up, Barry? How are you doing? Amazing. We're back to part two. It's hump day. I know for some some of y'all, it might be like a day or two, but it really was like 30 seconds for us. I can't believe I actually got to, I got to meet Staff Sergeant Parm. Yeah, I know. He's a, he's a, 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 he is hot. Yeah, I know. He is attractive. I know. You he is seen a Marine. Him. You should have seen him in the retirement ceremony. He rocked out a suit with the blue glasses. He was like, oh, I heard out. he came with a wife beater on. No, no, no. no. He yeah. didn't have okay, his wife Okay, so that beater. rumor is not. That, that's not true. Okay, so. But that, you know okay. what he had? He had some uh, some uh, pimp powder. Oh, wow. And he wow. was like slapping people you around. You didn't know if he was yeah. pimping or limping <laughs> out there. And that's what we love about him. We uh, love him. He's a heart, little heart puff out here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, obviously, guys, if you guys haven't watched part one, make sure that you guys go watch yeah. part uh, part one so that way you guys can get to meet Staff Sergeant Julia Parm. Give us uh, some feedback. Marine Corps Staff Sergeant and currently a Marine on recruiting duty. You guys kept asking for it uh-huh. uh, of Marines that are currently serving on the duty I can give it to you raw, okay? Wow. Damn. So yes. Wow. So how the? Wow. I, I know what, what you guys are trying to do. I don't go there. Albert don't go. Toe. We gonna get canceled, Barry. You <laughs> understand this? Master Ramos. We are in 2024. We gonna get canceled. I am blushing. You iguana wrestling man. You are a stud. We gonna get canceled. Yeah. So so Julio, what's the up, Puerto brother? Rican poppy. What's Welcome back. Uh-huh. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So. Uh, it, you know, in our last conversation, we left off whenever it was your decision of becoming a drill instructor and being a recruiter. Mm-hmm. You obviously chose the better option of the two, which was to become a United States Marine Corps recruiter. Right. What made you become a recruiter? Um, life circumstances. Um, okay. it, I, I was too late in, in life to develop, you know, bearing discipline and and. You know everything that being a drill instructor entails, right? Um, I guess I, I needed to work more on my communication skills, uh, salesmanship, marketing, things like that. And I looked at recruiting duty as something that could help me harness and and hone those techniques and skills. And um, that's pretty much what made that decision easy for me at that time in my life. Okay, what rank were you when you decided to um, to put in your package for recruiting? Staff sergeant. Okay, so you were a staff sergeant. Mm-hmm. How easy was it for you to put in that recruiting package? Let's start with there, right? Like, because I, I want, I want this to be relatable to all the corporal sergeants and staff sergeants and it's, possibly gunnies out there. That not, are well, first of all, as a sergeant major, I, I can count on one hand the amount of times I saw somebody volunteer and not get histed. So it couldn't have been common. All right, story time. So um, my gunny, he's talking about recruiting duty one day. And I was like, that that shit's not that hard. You, I could I could do that. And he's like, oh, oh, really? Um, and uh, he's like, okay. And he disappears for about an hour. Gunny Shortridge, shout out to him. So he comes back down with the package. And it's like, sign here. And I was like, what? Mm, he's like, no, sign that's here. Good, that's a good tactic if you ask me. <laughs> he's like, I was like, I was like, what is that? He was like, you need to pick an SDA and... Uh, you said recruiting duty is easy, so sign here. I was like, all right, right? Because this is something we kind of been talking about, but it's just when I opened up my mouth and said I could do it, right? So, boom, I sign it. It goes up. Um, he's like, you better sign now because that bonus was out at the time. I was like, cool, bet, right? Um, and my staff in CYC, my gunnery sergeant, hand walked my package all up and down the squadron, and he was he's the reason why a hundred percent. The reason why I'm on recruiting duty. Is this like a thankful statement or like, <laughs> yeah, I know he kind of was sending mis- mixed signals. He gave a shout out, but he was like, eh. <laughs> I just put a hit on him, but uh, <laughs> you got green lit. <laughs> yeah. If you see him no, I was actually with him last night. Okay, we, we, cool, cool. We, we were hanging out. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know yet. When I finish the duty, I'll be able to say, Hey, thanks. You know, it opened up a lot of things for me, a lot of opportunities, and it opened up my eyes to a lot of things too, because I've learned a lot about myself 
on this duty, and I've learned a lot about other people on this mm-hmm. duty. You are one hundred percent correct. Yeah. Oh yeah, we're gonna touch about uh, upon that. So okay, um, so essentially, you know, you're Gunny. You had a, a, a what sounds like a great human being and a good leader. Um, essentially help you to make that decision uh, uh, with you, right? Yeah. So he had encouragement. What would you say to those staff NCOs out there that would say, don't do recruiting duty? If you're, if, you, if you're a staff NCO that went on recruiting duty and you came back to the fleet and you tell another staff NCO or tell other Marines not to go on recruiting duty, they should hit you twice. Ooh. They should hit you twice. If I, if, if yes. I was in a position, I'd, oh, you're saying that? Guess what? Now you're going to go. Because mm. at some point in your career, you have to give back to the Marine Corps. Mm-hmm. Like, regardless of how you feel, if you're doing 20, yo, you, you, you got to do something. Because you can't keep leaving the same people out there doing the same thing. Like, that's, it's not fair. You know, we got a lot of people hiding out on recruiting duty. Um, it, 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 it is what it is. They, they stay in an easy area. You know, I'm not arguing with somebody in a, a, a non-liberal state. Because people are walking into the office like, I'm ready to go. Wait a minute. What's wrong with the liberal states? There's nothing wrong with liberal states, but it's more work for us. He because spun that. You see that? Yeah, he, he, he did. That's I called deflecting. You did. That's called deflecting you on know. recruiting. There, there's duty, nothing. Right? It's just there's there's more disinterest. There's there's more obstacles. In they order. don't want to join the military. 100%. They're I'm, telling their kids not to join the military. Unless it's their last resort. That's right. Yep. Unless, but until it's their go, last resort. But when you go to a state that's what? Conservative? They're jumping in the boat. Is that what you're saying? You said it, not me. I'm just saying, though, but like I said it, but I agree you with agree? you. Though. Okay. I, I, I think you're correct. Okay. You know? All right, then. All right. I yeah. didn't say it, though. I didn't, it didn't come out of my mouth. I just said it. But know. I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Conservative state, red state. They're... Texas is easy. We all know that. <laughs> Texas wow. is easy. I got all know that. from Texas calling me hey. up saying, like, that shit freaking sucks. Hey, shout out to my boys in Texas. Y'all hey, know who y'all yeah, I'm going to tell you why it sucks. <laughs> it's because there is a lot of people from Texas, but you got to think about the people that are, are walking into the, the recruiting station in Texas. A lot of them don't, don't have their papers, a lot of them don't speak well English. Let's be real. Let's be real. I'm, I mean, I'm just being real because it's the same thing with Puerto Rico. In Puerto Rico, it was, oh, you're so lucky. You're so lucky that you got to recruit in Puerto Rico. How are the women over there? It was great, right? Like, you were going to the bitch. You were probably recruiting in flip-flops and stuff, right? How was it, though? The fu- well, it was fun. Okay. Said, but, but, he said going to the beach, guys. It sounded like bitch. Yeah, people think, people think that we're... Said, beach, beach. Beach. I know people Albert. Say, he's a friend of mine. People say that. People think that we're recruiting over there, like, in, in, in the beaches and stuff, in swimsuits and freaking flip-flops. But did you? It's not. No. But you know. No, once. you did. <laughs> no, did you hey, 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 hey. Connect the fucking mic. Hey, my guy is here to defend me. Our video guy, by the way, I recruited him in the United States Marine Corps. That's what's up. That. No, I, I didn't, didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. So I recruited him in the United States Marine Corps. He is here. He's doing great. So I got I got actual tangible evidence of Hell people yeah. here. Okay. Okay. Oh, and and hey, Jose, Jose, for the people here and for of Staff Sergeant Julio over here, <laughs> where did I meet you at? There we go. I met him at the college. It wasn't at the beach. He felt like, I felt like he changed his answer like 7 <laughs> 11 times in his head before he gave it, yeah, though. Really? That fool was like, it was uh, at the beach, it was at the bar, it was at La Playa. <laughs> okay. You know college but, beach. Yeah, but let's, exactly. get, let's, get, let's, get, let's get back to it. Okay, so you put in your package. Yeah. Uh, obviously, how long, how long did you have to wait to get a response? Uh, we got back from that deployment in November. Uh, package was submit no no i'm lying my package was submitted before we deployed so i got a deployment out the way came back and then um we came back in november and then i was in recruiting school in february okay so i had like a year if i had like a year to sit and, and cook okay looking back at it when would you recommend for marines to put in their recruiting or their sda package so it depends on what the marine wants right if if you just if you just reenlisted, you're probably gonna get hissed. Okay. Because we know we got you for some time. Yeah. Right? Does that make sense? Yeah. This is a business. Don't forget, sense. right? That makes perfect um, sense. But let's say you are at the end of a enlistment and you're gonna re enlist, you might as well put in a the package then. So put it in as soon as possible, get it over with, get it out the way. It's not recruiting duty is not it's not that bad. It's it's not. I, whatever. I don't want to deviate from it. But put it in if, if you wanna do it, put it in. Drone instructor recruiting, but put it in as soon as possible. Um, just be aware of the timelines that if you do put it in at the end of the reenlistment, you're going to have to extend. Um, 
and uh, that, that's it. So it's really up to the individual when they think they're ready. What's what rank do you suggest for Marines to go on recruiting duty? I think sergeant. Sergeant is the perfect one. Yeah, so you can go as a corporal. I had I had a very good friend of mine. He went in as a as a boot ass sergeant. He left the duty as a gunnery sergeant. Yep. Three and a half years. Recruiting later. duty is a cheat code to getting promoted. If you if you get passed, go on recruiting duty. Yeah. Can't wait to talk about that. But if you get passed, go on recruiting duty and put your money where your mouth is. It's it's the only job in the Marine Corps where the numbers reflect at the end of the month. You can literally show what you did at the end of the month. You can't hide on recruiting duty. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You can't you 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 pull over and go to sleep on the side of the road. You're burning your time. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the month, everybody's gonna know what you did. Now, yeah, but there's a lot of other metrics in there too, right? It's not just like you put in two, you know. Nope. That there, is the only metric people care about. That's what? the only one. What? That's the only okay. metric people care about. I was okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Which, I thought you might have said which, something like, nope. you know, be, well, as a staff NCO, because I had a huge. I'm argument. being serious. I didn't know that. No, no, no. I had a huge argument with my staff NCOIC. One of my staff NCOICs when I was on recruiting duty, right? Right, right, right. Because I used to tell him, it's like. Or I told him once, and he fucking reminded me this shit until the day that he left. Um, shout out to Master Gunnery Sergeant Torres. I'm just gonna go ahead and say his name out there, mm -hmm. okay? He is he is in the Sixth Marine Corps District Headquarters right now. Uh, um, um, I'm just gonna leave it at that. But okay. Uh, uh, so I told him, oh yeah, you don't have a you don't have a a, a mission. Mm -hmm. He was like, come here, big dog. Let, let let me show you my mission, and then he showed me the mission letter for the for the for the you know, RS for the R, for the RSS. It's like you have to recruit two. I have to recruit six, seven every single month. That's what he told me. Yes, that's what he told me. Yeah, because you got to think about it. The one the responsible, yes, because yeah, yeah, he's yeah, the boss. Yeah, yeah, the one yeah, yeah. responsible for yeah. the numbers. Yeah. It's him. more stress. Yes. So yes. that is that is the only metric. I mean, we can debate this. I so guess. I think. I think what he meant was the contract. Like the like. Did you? Did you? I don't like saying, talking to them as them as contracts, the applicants. But did you influence two people a month to join the Marine Corps? Well, like, here's okay. Here's what I mean. We're it's a business. You said that already. Right. And so you know what are you going to do? You're going to deep dive into the numbers because. You know, it's just like what's what sales, right? What is your close rate? Okay, mm -hmm. if I get a hundred leads and my close rate is fifty percent, I got fifty people. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal, yes. right? And every yes. salesperson is different. Mm -hmm. So I guess the reason I was asking is just you know, do you sit down and go, okay, where can we improve over here? Do we need this many calls, this many appointments to essentially get to that? You know, two uh, Marines at the end of the month that joined. Yeah. But the only metric at the end of the day that matters is how much people you put in at the end of the day. And what are their ASVAB scores? I, That's the only thing that... that yeah. I think the only metric that matters Mine was is like 92. The, yeah, 92? Mm -hmm. yeah, On the ASVAB? Mm -hmm. God damn. I didn't know that. Yeah. You're smart, smart. Well, guys, serious is the deal. That's why you know, everybody is going to be a little, 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 little. Like a nerd, man. Yeah, I know. Damn. I know. Hey, um, see, you, ain't, you ain't much different. You scored a 73. Yeah, but I, I sucked at school. Um, so what, what I'm saying is that metric of, of how many contracts you write will save you on how much work you actually put in. Because if you make a 1,000 TCs, uh, Say telephone that one calls, more time, the metrics. The, the, the amount of contracts you write will save you from how much work you put in. So if I write two contracts in the beginning of the month, if you write, if you you guys work for me, you write two contracts in the beginning of the month, I can't be mad at what you do for the rest of the month because you gave me two. Uh -huh. you, I really but can't I be mad. About it. Right? What I, does I, that mean? I can go to Chipotle and just fling carne Chipotle, asada on the I don't walls. give a fuck where, you don't give a fuck where you're at. I don't even have to come to work. You don't even have to, I, ain't, I did it. <sighs> Straight up, I did it. I gotta make sure you're alive. I know. Hey, listen, <laughs> I'm gonna sure with that. Guys, okay. guys, sure and I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say this. Got a morning okay? report. <laughs> I'm gonna say this. We I'm gonna say this. Make sure you're alive. <laughs> I'm, I'm out of the Marine Corps already. He's still in, okay. Yeah. And I have. I, this is the second time. The first time that I met him was, uh, and we had a very brief conversa uh, conversation. Whenever we went, so I, I'm, we're literally debating this. The experiences that I'm sharing are my experiences while I was on recruiting duty, and I was a very high producing recruiter when I was on recruiting duty. So I'm sharing my experiences, not his experiences, so we can debate this, uh, okay? Or he can just be like, I'm not I'm not gonna talk about that, right? But I will, because I don't give a fuck. So, <laughs> so yeah, to, to me, 
boss, I'm doing this today. This is what I'm doing. My number's already in the system. The only, there were only two things that my, my staff and CIC's cared that I put in the numbers. Mm-hmm. Every and when I'm talking about actually individually in the system in my Chris, that I put in the numbers for that day. That's what the only thing that he cared, and that I, at the end of the month that I had two to three contracts a month. So now, once I paid what, my dues, I was I okay. Didn't, but what if you shit. got a a, a, a uh, you know recruiter at your substation who's not performing? That's the we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Okay. But right now, right now, what I want to know is okay. So you said sergeant. Perfect right. rank for the Marine for yeah. the Marine to go is sergeant. Absolutely. Because so many opportunities. I agree with you 100%. Now, let's debunk recruiting school. Okay. I think, Ooh. and I'll share my opinion first before I ask a question, and you tell me if this statement is true. I think that recruiting school is the best school that the Marine Corps has to offer. Do you agree with that or not? No. Okay. Why not? Um, because everybody doesn't take what they get at recruiting school. They're, not, they're 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 certified because they did a certain amount of time or they hit certain wickets, but it doesn't always translate to where they go. So, for example, you can go to go to recruiting school, right? Um, but let's say something happens, you get kicked out of Marine Corps a month later. What are you gonna do with those skills? If I go through my MOS school, become an electrician, I get kicked out the month, uh, a month later out of the Marine Corps, I can go be an electrician school. still. You know what I mean? The recruiting school pretty much teaches you how to guide a conversation to be able to apply to somebody's priority needs. Um, but everybody doesn't, everybody that comes out of there, they're not really equipped with that immediately. It's something that develops over time. I, so, I think, uh, yeah, I, that, that, makes, that makes perfect sense. Um, that makes absolute sense. Um, I yeah, but I, I disagree. I still, I still think it's the best school. I, even with that, <laughs> that makes sense. Just, but you're wrong. I, I still, I still think <laughs> you're me, incorrect, dude, <laughs> dude. Like the skills that that I learned, you that I learned on recruiting school. Yes, me. You okay? Uh, this the skills that I learned in recruiting school are what's gonna make me a millionaire. Hands down. I'll, I'm going to hit you with a counterpunch. Here's the problem. I'm not going to like it. <laughs> the, no, no, go the, ahead. Applica the applicability that a student or a graduate applies to the education they've received does not directly affect the, you know, um, efficiency of that school or if it's prestigious or if it's the best school. Does that make sense? Yes. Like I just because I go out there and punt it in the stands as a recruiter does not mean that recruiting school is a bad school or it's not the best. But the, but so this is my thing. Uh, recruiting school teaches communication, right? We agree. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I've never been there, but communication is a par perishable skill. If you don't use it and exercise your mind, I that is okay. If, that is if true you're not well. witty, if you're not active, if you're if your brain's not going like. You, but do you see my point though? I get, I equipped you with the tools and the knowledge. Whether yeah. you apply them or not, I, I don't have any control over that as an as an educational institution. Yeah. So my question to you is name a better school. I I, I think we have I think we have really good technical schools. Hmm. Like we, we have definitely a, do. We have a higher success rate for Marines that do hands on work. I'm I'm only gonna apply to aviation, right? Sure. Like we've got, we take 18 year old kids from high school and teach them how to fix aircraft. Like right. who else is doing that? They have to go to college for that stuff. Like when, by the time you get people in recruiting school, they're sergeants, staff sergeants, gunnies, they're all, they've already matured to a certain level. Yeah. But the technical schools that the Marine Corps offers, it literally takes these kids that were just flipping burgers and now they're installing a generator in an aircraft or, you know, updating a weapon system. So like that's why I think like I don't I don't think it's the best school I don't think it's a bad school but I'm saying like the best school like one of those kids could be like they could get kicked out the Marine Corps for something dumb and then go work for Boeing yeah. as a Lance Corporal yeah I I've, at Tesla I've seen yeah it. I don't think I don't think it's either or I think I think it's either and so so the reason why I say that is because let's say for example um, let's say the let's take the electrician example right. Mm -hmm. The recruiting school is what teaches you f to go, f at least, again, this is my opinion, but it's what teaches you to go from, I'm going to be an electrician and work for X company mm -hmm. to, I'm going to be an electrician and start my own company.
Because now you have the networking skills. Now you develop those critical thinking skills in order for you to be able to how to manage a conversation in a group of individuals that you can influence and impact to want to do business with you. Mm. That's why I think that recruiting school is the best school because it can take you from the skills that you learn in the Marine Corps instead of applying them for somebody else and making somebody else a shit ton of money. Now you can apply them and be and now don't get me wrong. This is just me. And I'm a I'm an average ass fucking individual from Puerto Rico. I, like I've said in this podcast before, I'm not even fucking supposed to be here. Mm-hmm. Let alone may, be making the amount of money that I'm fucking making. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't necessarily mean that that is 100% correct. Because look at Barry. Mm-hmm. Barry's doing fucking way better than me. And he didn't even go to recruiting school. Well, he's a natural. Like exactly. Said, he's you, a natural. You can't teach charisma. Yeah. 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 So, okay. So we went over, you know, the perfect time frame. Now, let's go into the weeds of of recruiting school, right? What attitude do you, looking back at it, what attitude do you suggest Marines that are going to recruiting school should have in the schoolhouse? Because, again, let me preface that. The reason why I said it is because a lot of people that get hissed, I don't want to be there. Mm -hmm. So what attitude do um, do you suggest that they have when they get there? I mean, that's easy. Have a good attitude, right? But um, I think uh, it, it's hard for me to speak up for people who've been histed because I didn't get histed. Mm. So I don't know what it's like to be like, hey, you're going here for three years. You don't have a choice. <laughs> or you do have a choice. And we all know how that works out. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I can't really speak on that. Um, I know me going to recruiting school, I was optimistic. Off the back-to-back deployments um, and being away, like I was like, okay, cool, change of pace. Let me get out there, get out, get out in the streets. Like I think it was it it, it was fun to me. Um, fun fact: recruiting duty actually uh, <laughs> it actually reawakened my competitiveness because after I, I was lethargic for a long time. Like I did not care about standing out. I just wanted one of my paycheck, wanted to go home. Like, yeah. but um, I think every, every anytime you go to do something, you should approach it and be optimistic because you're gonna get more if you approach it that way. If you come in with negative or like I don't want to be the, be here, blah blah blah. This and that, this is trash. They did this. Then yeah, you, you're probably gonna you're probably gonna struggle, especially on recruiting duty. So mm-hmm. for those that did not get histed, be optimistic. For those of you that got histed, I can't really relate. Yeah, um, I didn't get histed either. I volunteered as well for the duty. Wow. Um, but I will tell you this though: um, the people that want to be in the Marine Corps. Uh, and got histed because the difference in between the Marines that got histed and want to be in the Marine Corps and the Marines that ha- that were histed and don't want to be in the Marine Corps but need to be in the Marine Corps. The difference in between wanting and needing. You learn that actually in recruiting school. OK, mm-hmm. but the reason why I say that is because there's going to be even the Marines. A lot of people th- say. Uh, there's two types of Marines, the Marines that volunteer and the Marines that get histed. Mm-hmm. I think there there's actually a, a, a subcategory in the Marines that get histed. It's because the Marines that want to be in the Marine Corps and understand that in order for them to continue their career, recruiting duty is just another stepping stone into them furthering their career. And that's okay because they want to be in the Marine Corps. They see value in being in the Marine Corps. Now, the second subcategory that that we that I see in that is the Marines that go on recruiting duty, not wanting to go on recruiting duty, and not wanting to be a Marine, but needing to be a Marine because now they depend on the Marine Corps or in the military for their finances and to sustain their families. And that's the majority of recruiters. Uh, 100%. I I wouldn't say I wouldn't say that's the 100%. majority. I wouldn't say that I wouldn't say that that's the majority of recruiters, but the, the, you that are the watching prior this prior recruiters are going to hate me for this, but here's the truth. Prior recruiters in the Marine Corps, they are the Rodney Dangerfields of the Marine Corps. Mm. And that's why 8999s and and prior drill sergeants get such a bad rap because they come off like they're so perfect and superior and everybody wants to knock them off this proverbial high horse and it's like you're dealing with two different types of Marines. Almost every single drill instructor is a volunteer. Very rare that you're going to get somebody that's hissing I don't think that's to true. go drill instructor. I don't think that's oh, true 100%. at all. I don't think that's true at all. And look at what you're doing. We've talked about this. This is why, and there's recruiters that are going to get triggered and they're going to get mad at me. I feel for the recruiters out there, and the number one reason is because you are out there in middle America with like two other Marines, you're rubbing elbows with 
People in California, you said it, it's a liberal state. All these, you're just surrounded and immersed in it. And what am I immersed in? Nothing but Marine Corps motivation. Have you yeah. been to Camp Lejeune and you wake up in the morning and Marines are on River Road and all you hear is cadence? They're hiking, they're humping, they're running, they're PTing, you hear gunfire. Like that's Marine Corps. Yeah, um, no, I get what you're saying, but what I'm saying is uh, what I was the point that I was trying to make whenever it comes to those two top of Marines that actually got histed yeah. is that you have to identify which type of Marine you are. Are you the Marine that needs to be in the Marine Corps? Or are you the Marine that uh, that wants to be in the Marine Corps? Because that that approach that you have, because right now you probably have people in your ear right now, whether it'll be staff sergeants, whether it'll be gunners, whether it'll be other sergeants that were on the duty saying, oh, don't go on recruiting duty because recruiting duty sucks. Pistol. This is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. And then you already you already pre-wired your mind to most likely the things that they're saying will happen. And as soon as they happen, you don't realize, but the only thing that you have in your mind is the way that you perceive that. Because I had a master that told me that don't go on recruiting duty. Recruiting duty sucks. And it, almost everything that he told me came to came true. So he wasn't lying. Mm -hmm. Do you but see the you, difference though? But do you know that the, you do, but do you know what actually changed? The way that I approached it. Instead of me just like, man, fuck this. Master I was right. Like, this shit sucks. I was like, hell no. Now is when I'm going to start fucking putting in some fucking work. But and guess most what? Marines My aren't going to do that. I never had a prior drill instructor ever say anything like that to me. Never. It was always the prior recruiter. And, why, and, and when leaders do that, we talked off camera yesterday. It's the same thing when leaders are convincing the Marines to get out of order somewhere. It's like, what? You're, first of all, you're projecting your negative mindset and, and you know your experiences onto a young devil dog who hasn't even done it. Barry, but here's the thing. Here's the thing, brother. Um, the reason why it that happens is because most room instructors, brother, they drink the fucking Kool-Aid to a point that is not relatable with people. You see what I'm saying? Like, like, damn, like, no, you're, he's right. I mean, I'm like, not going to, but that's, that's my why, point that's is that why. you're surrounded by it. Yeah, but Dude. you're surrounded by it, but that's not the you Marine You smell Corps, like though. bulldog every day when you go home or aqua, <laughs> whatever the hell they that's put not, on. Unless you're I mean, an, that's serious. Unless you're an MCRD Paris <laughs> Island yeah. or you're an MCRD San Diego, that is not the Marine Corps. And then all of a sudden you take that beaming fucking light of motivation that's a prior drill instructor and you put them in whatever type of fucking unit. That's why those people tend to get fucking EO complaints and tend to get fucking hazing allegations and tend to get all that stuff because that is not the Marine Corps. As a recruiter... I don't agree with you trying to what you're saying, like trying to get Marines out of orders, but at least you can relate to like, damn, man, like, thank you for at least giving me your opinion or giving me your honest. I just think that it. you're unique. Albert Ramos is unique. You guys both volunteered. It rarely happens. Rarely. And you're unique in the regard that you took it just the way you just said. Hey, I appreciate your opinion, but I'm going to go find out for myself because I think I can do this. I can name off off the top of my head. I'm, you probably can do the same. Um, a lot of Marines that I don't see myself as unique. I, Dude, I was a fucking shitty ass recruiter at the beginning. Mm -hmm. I was a shitty ass recruiter at the beginning. I'm telling you. Like, I'm not unique. The reason yeah, but you're why new I'm to the, the way, job. The reason, not even. I graduated number seven out of like 200 and something freaking Marines in my class. And even with that, I still wrote three zeros. On recruiting? Yeah. Um, Re recruiting school? recruiting school, yeah. So fun story about that real quick. Um, I was trash in recruiting school. Yeah. There are seven tests. <laughs> there are seven tests at the time when I was there, and I failed five of them. Failed. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Not even playing. Um, now, I don't know if it was due to partying, staying out late. Let me stop playing. That's not what it was. Yeah, but that was for me. <laughs> uh, nah, I I failed. Uh, I failed five of the tests. Like I could not go off the structure and the script that they were giving us for MC three, MC four, or excuse me, MC three. Um, throwing tags, any of that, couldn't do it. Like it made no. Like y'all talk to people like this. Y'all really talk to people like this. Like sounds robotic at the beginning, huh? One hundred percent. 100%. And and it was crazy because each one of the instructors would always be like, man, you're going to be fine. You're going to do good. And I remember the last one, uh, I think it was the tags, right? Um, he's like, hey, man, you're, you're going to be solid on the streets. 
And I was, and he was like, but I was like, let me stop you. But I still failed. He was like, yeah, something just wasn't clicking for me personally. And mm -hmm. I think it's because of my age and all my life experiences where I'm like, if you say something to me, I already know that I'm two steps ahead in the conversation of where I'm taking it, me naturally. Mm -hmm. So I don't need to do certain things or I or skip certain steps. I, I kept getting hit with that. Yeah. Um, so for me to go through the school and struggle as much as I did, I was terrified. Going into the school, I was super optimistic. Coming out of the school, I was like, oh my God, I don't know how to talk to people. Mm -hmm. Like that was my thing. Like I did not know how to talk to people. And that that's what that that almost shifted the mood for recruiting duty. But to answer your initial, you know, question. We go on tangents a lot. I'm, I apologize. Hey, but you're doing, great, because of you're doing a great job though. Cause I don't know how you do it, but you sometimes I forget where we're going, you always bring it back. So that's <laughs> that's awesome. I'm like, thank God. Um, but to answer your question, it's a generational thing. Um, nobody wants to not have control over what they want to do. So when they get histed, that's they're coming in with a certain attitude already. Most of the time, they're coming in bitter. Most of the time. You were comfortable. You were in your barracks room, chilling, minding your business. Now you have to learn a whole new job. You have to move to a whole new state, relocate. You've never had an apartment before. So now you have to figure out, get a get a background check, a, a credit score check and everything so you can get an apartment. You just shook this person's whole life up. Who wouldn't be? Who wouldn't well, be but the thing is, and, and anytime you, you have Marines like that, and I disagree with you still, because as a Sergeant Major, I, re, I, I screened more packages I, you can't, I can't even count them. I cannot even count them. And the amount of times I had an NCO put in their package, this is going to be detrimental to my career. I'm like, where the hell? Who told you that? What was your background? Where did when you, you were screening these packages, and I'm sorry to cut you as off. As a Sergeant Major. I know, but what units? What type of units? Oh, artillery and air wing. Okay. That is, that is, would you, wouldn't you agree? As that, a first sergeant, it, it was. Both of those are very segmented units in the Marine Corps. They are, but as a, as a first sergeant, it was infantry. It was, um, I did I&I and I and I did Marine Corps base. So I've been to supporting establishment. I've been with the reserves. I've been with the infantry, artillery, and the air wing. Mm. As so, 89, 99. Yeah. So, and the, and the reserve unit was uh, motor T. So logistics yeah. and stuff like that. I got to respect, I got to respect, you know, the fact that, that, that happened and he i know i'm triggering his mind right now but but um, <laughs> and at marine corps base you deal with everybody right i yeah, had 46 yeah, yeah. sections and it you deal with everybody so i had a you have all the mos's i had oh ones i had supply I, know, man. I can't i just can't relate with eod that. yeah i just can't relate with that and the reason why i can't relate with that is because and, and again i don't know if it was because of me marine saw me and was like man i want to volunteer you see what I'm saying? Like, I want to volunteer, but I had a lot of people that I had more Marines to volunteer than Marines that got hissed. What about your experience? As far as most of the Marines I came over got hissed. Well, the burden of proof is on you because if it if that were the case, we wouldn't have the hissed. Yeah, most most of the true <laughs> most of the most of the ones I came over got hissed. Very but, true. Yeah, nobody wanted to leave. Now, let me ask you this: What was the hardest part in recruiting school? Going back to school, I hate school. Yeah. I hate school. I hate studying. I, I don't like it. That's why I joined the Marine Corps. I don't, I don't want to go to school no more. Then the Marine Corps <laughs> sent me to school twice. I don't, I don't like school. Hey, you get college credits, though. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. It's associated somewhere in there. But Okay, I, so I but, like but what was the hardest part? Like, uh, go, besides going to school, was it the tags? Was it the presentations? What was the hardest part in recruiting school? I would say staying on script. Uh, that is the hardest part on script with, I mean? with TC. So there's a chart, there's a flow chart. Mm -hmm, so okay. when I ask you a question and you give me an answer, it's like, did mm. you eat today? If they say yes or no, yes. Oh, yes. What did you eat? No. Oh, that's too bad. You should eat something. Like there's a whole flow chart. Got it. Yeah. And and there's certain steps that you gotta hit. Yeah. And what they're listening for is key words. Okay. Like because that's how you know that you're transitioning from one step to the other. Okay, so w whenever you start the conversation, they're looking for certain things. They're looking, you know, to ensure that you are uh, uh, presenting yourself because you got to present the, the core values, how they call it. And the core values, essentially, it is like, good afternoon. My name is uh, Gunnar Sergeant Ramos with the Marines. Mm. You know, like they like you have to hit certain steps in order for you to uh, uh, to make sure that you're hitting the wicket. So for you, it was staying on script. Yeah, absolutely. You know what it was for me? memorizing the the freaking like the benefit tax 
memorizing them memorizing because i'm a very i like to think that i'm a very theatrical person i think that's the proper way to say it yeah. yeah so so i wanted to make sure that i come in with like passion and in reality they don't give a shit if you come up with passion or if you come up with not passion no. or anything like that they just care that you just say the yep. damn thing right yep. so that was the hardest yep. thing for me you know because i try to add like extra words and then they keep me like nope going back because i i like to add things and i remember the i'm sorry i'm sorry no, if good. i'm going off too long but i remember the very first thing that i did when i was introducing myself because the very first day they have you go up there and then introduce yourself to your group to your little group right it's like 15 to 20 of them in mm. in, in each individualized class right so it's class talk style so you have to go up there you have to introduce yourself and i was like super like hyper and i was like so every time that i say something else you guys go kill dude they're My like no instructor That's so corny. stop me <laughs> and says like sergeant ramos if you say some dumb ass shit <laughs> like that again you will fucking get dropped do you understand that oh uh, yeah it's gonna drop you you don't, you don't get dropped from that school <laughs> yeah well they that he fucking scared the fuck out of me hey master gunner sergeant granillo i still have him on facebook yep. a great guy so transitioning i know master gunner granillo the, the you know attitudes, oh yeah he was though. in the trouble record district yeah yeah, so so you t transitioning out of the schoolhouse, um, you go. Actually, no, I want to touch on one more thing in the schoolhouse. Okay. The most important day, the heartbreak it there for Marines, which is district assignment day. Talk to us a little bit more about district assignment date. Uh, okay, so I put in my by name request a couple months before I went to the school. What is a by name request? Uh, where you send an email with your resume to the sergeant major at uh, the RS you want to go to. Um, they may call you. They may say, okay, cool, I'll keep in touch or whatnot. But uh, I actually had a conversation with the sergeant major. Um, and he was like, okay, man, you look good. We'll see, we'll see what's up, see what we can do for you. So in my mind, I'm thinking, like, I reached out. I put my name out there. Cool. Now, what I didn't account for is that I they record every single test at BRC. So when you're, when you're talking... There's a camera on you, which makes it weird because you're scared to mess up. Like now, I don't know if they did when you went through. Mm -mm, so no. now they record it. So when you're throwing tags, when you're making a TC, they're recording you so you can see yourself or they're saving it. I guess they're building a file. I don't know. I never looked at it again. So they probably saw me failing these tests. I'm like, this dude's retarded. He can't talk to anybody. Maybe. I don't know, right? But district assignment day, I'm standing over there with my boy, uh, Gunnery Sergeant Brenniger, and we're like, yeah, we're going to Seattle. Yeah, because he said he got Seattle too. Well, it's almost like kids sitting at the adoption house or facility or whatever. The yeah, you're, you're waiting to get picked for kickball. Right. <laughs> and, and like, dude comes. They, call, they start calling everybody's name. Like, Brenniger, Seattle. And I'm waiting for Parm. Parm, Sacramento. I was like, y'all serious? <laughs> y'all serious? Like, I, 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 put in a, by surprise. I put in a by name request. I did everything you told me to do. This is, this is what you got me? Like, for real? This grunnel. I went there with like four of the five guys and I was like, what? I'm like, man, dang, I really messed up. And now I'm just like, all right, I guess they don't want me because I suck. Um, mm. So a lot of people got really butt hurt. There was one staff and CEO out in the uh, courtyard. I guess he was throwing a tantrum or something. Like, I'm trying wow. to stay close to my, yeah. Like, I'm telling you, they just be promoting anything. But he was throwing a tantrum or whatever. I just took it on the chin and I was like, okay, all right, well. Guess they got me. So that was my district assignment day experience. I did not go where I wanted to at the time, but I think it worked out. I mean, anytime you have those those disgruntled attitudes, you know, and, and I know you kind of touched on it a little bit with getting histed versus not getting histed. It's always a mismanagement of expectations. Yeah. That person feels something should have went another way yeah. that it didn't go. And, you know, it's like, you're not guaranteed anything. Yeah, but the reason why I touch up on that is because I get these phone calls, um, not all the time, but s some of the times, uh, of Marines that are going to recruiting school, and they call me up before and be like, "Oh yeah, man, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna get um, a station in Arizona or Washington or whatever. I want to buy a house." Mm. And I'm like, "Okay, hold on a second. Hold on, buddy. W where are you? Where are hold you at right motivator. now? Have you gone? Have you been assigned your district or your RSS or your RS yet?" And it's like no it's like then don't, don't do, do it. it don't do it don't yet do it. 
because you might be you might be highly surprised and then now you get stuck with a home in a completely different state or even in the same state like let's say for example you get stage you get the rs that you want but you might not get the rss mm. that yeah because you, you could be because california is going to be a lot different you you're probably you know more populated and closer together than maybe somebody who's in freaking nebraska yep. and maybe they, they have, may have to jump to another state yep. yeah true very yeah. true that's who okay so district assignment day is done now you go into rs Sacramento. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So talk to me about like your first year in recruiting duty. All right. So first year, um, I, I told myself, I was like, look, you just, you, you're going to work until you get what you came for. So there's people who go off data, right? Um, like I made this many contacts. I got this many leads, right? And then you do the math and percentage. I hate that. So I just keep working until I get what I need. Okay. Like, um, I, it, that's that's something that I do personally because I just I don't I, I had a huge fear of being on a zero at the end of yeah. the month. Um, now because of my circumstances, I can say like I've I've never written a zero, um, but I was only on the streets for six months. So mm. it takes you nine months to get um, evaluated, get certified as a canvassing recruiter. But because my staff in CYC at the time was leaving. Um, the CEO at the time, he's like, hey, look, we know you don't know systematic recruiting. We can teach you systematic recruiting, but we can't teach leadership. So he's like, you're the next staff in COIC. You're the next man up. So then they put me in that seat to be uh, the staff in COIC. That happened at my six-month mark. So we're talking like January 1st, 2023. So from January 1st, 2023 to today, um, I've been uh, the staff in COIC at RSS South Sacramento. And you never wrote a zero? Nope. What was your recipe for success? Um, I needed, I needed as many uh, volume. Okay, volume. That's it. Okay, but I guess what I'm trying to do right is because I, I get what I understand what you're saying. Okay, break it down. But to what, what I did? does that mean exactly? What, what did does I do? that mean okay. to somebody that's right. never been on recruiting duty and like is about to go on recruiting duty? So like, what the fuck does that mean? So you're going to clip this, right? Uh, between the first and the seventh of every month as a recruiter in any branch, you need to be, you need to set up class talks. You want to find those teachers that are going to let you talk in each period, like get, get you a 30 minute presentation. You're talking about going to a high school. Going to a high yeah. school, class talks. Um, and what that's going to do is it's going to allow you to get contacts, information, you know, you pass out the pack sheets in the class, the kid, they'll fill out the pack sheets on their own. Now you got 30 packs in one class, right? If you teach six classes, and you get 30 kids in six classes to fill out those pack sheets, now you have 180 packs. Now, depending on your presentation skills, if you're money, if you have a good command presence, you're a good storyteller, those kids might circle, yes, I'm interested, right? Now, there's still a formula with that too, but I'm not gonna give all that away, right? Yeah. Shout yeah. out to Gunny Dutton. But like I'm saying, like if, if you're a good storyteller, they'll circle yes, and they'll, they'll, they'll want interest, right? So you get 180 packs, you may get, I'm gonna be humble, you may get 20 kids that are interested, right? 10 of them are gonna fail the ASVAB. They're not gonna qualify. Five of them are gonna get disqualified um, for medical reasons. You're gonna have five, two of those kids, their parents are gonna sign PC, and then three of them might parental, actually give you a Parental shot. consent. That's parental consent, PC. sorry. They, three of them might give you a shot to make mission if they go up there and they don't smoke or they don't have any other issues wrong with them, right? Things that you don't know about. So from the first to the seventh of every month, all you guys need to be in your schools giving out those class talks. After that, uh, I tell my guys, we're big on building your day, scheduling your day every day on recruiting duty, right? I tell my guys from the hours of nine to two, you need to be inside of a school. You cannot get ghosted by a kid that goes to the same place every day for eight hours a day. <laughs> I'm going to find you. You know what I mean? I tell them, listen, if you don't show up, I'm coming to your school. All right. I, that is how I talk to them, right? You talk to them like Lance Corporal's PFC's privates. I tell them, go to your school. Uh, the next thing, your staff, they should love you at your schools, the administrators. Mm -hmm. I tell my guys the same thing. I've been waiting a long time. You never go to a school empty handed and you never leave empty handed. Now, what does that mean? Hey, you're bringing donuts, you're bringing coffee, you're bringing whatever. When they see you, they need to be like, oh, yes, the staff's our problem. What up, my boy? Yeah, what you need? Hey, they, they need to be happy to see you. And then when you leave that school, you need to be walking out of there with two contacts or appointments. So these are things that 
I did, and I had to develop on my own. And I, I did a lot of other stuff too, right? I had kids that want to be a Marine that were super smart, but they were overweight. So I had to take time away from prospecting to like work out with them and get them in shape, right? One of my videos that went viral when I first made that page when I was smaller, it was a kid came in at 270. We knocked him down to 220, shipped him. He's been a Marine Corps almost as long as I've been on recruiting duty, and he's an intel intelligence Marine now. Yeah. That changed his whole life. Mm -hmm. He's like, dude, I lost so much weight. He's 180, 190 pounds right now. John, shout out John Hood. He And he is just like, thank you so much. Like, that's the shit. That's the shit that makes recruiting duty worth it. So if those tips and tricks that I gave you when it comes to dates and timelines, that first to the seventh, that, that if you hit that window, most of those kids are gonna end up contracting. The yeses, the ones that's nothing wrong with them, they're gonna end up contracting at the end of the month or the beginning of the next month. So if you keep that cycle flowing, you will keep that going for the next, uh, all the way up to the summer, because then we can't get in schools in the summertime. So you yeah. gotta start building up your, your other stuff. But that's that was my formula that I had to develop. And the thing that sucked the most about it was that when I developed that, they took me off the streets and put me in the seat. And that's when I became a staff at CYC. Got you. Now, I want to touch up on um, a, a couple of more things. What is, um, so let's say a kid, a high, I'm not, I don't want to call them kids. A high school student goes into your office. Right. From the moment that they walk into your office to the moment that they ship to boot camp, what are the procedures that need to happen in order for that kid, high school student, to become a United States Marine? Uh, well, you have to bring all your vital information so that we can verify that you're a citizen, right? Or your citizenship. Um, so that consists of your birth certificate, your social, a uh, photo ID, um, and then either transcripts if you're still in high school or your diploma. So we need those to verify that you, one, completed your education like in high school, and then two, that you're a citizen. Um, then after that, you're gonna have to take your ASVAB, pass it, right? Minimum score is 31 for the Marine Corps. Um, and then after that, you're gonna have to take a physical. So this physical is what is is the the bane of, of recruiting duty right now because uh, there's a system that called Genesis that's gonna pull all of your medical information. So if you had a, hair, uh, uh, you had a headache in 2014, in December 1st, 2014, I'm going to see it if you call the doctor about it. It says migraines. And then I'm going to, your recruiter is going to have to go get more paperwork to justify that you're good for military service. I've had people get DQ for astigmatisms. I've had people get DQ for asthma, childhood asthma. I've had people, they pull up uh, their mental health evaluations. Um, there's so many disqualifiers. Like the general youth of America cannot afford to say, like, this is my last resort. Because what happens is you wait till you're 27, 28, and you come into the office asking me to save you, and you've got all this medical stuff wrong with you, and now I can't. Now you're stuck here. Now now Sacramento or wherever you're at, that's going to be your tomb. You're going to have to figure I it out. I saw that do so you many times. Do you wish the Marine Corps did not have that system? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I've, I've lost... It's not the Marine Corps, though. I, it's not. It's all, it's all branches. I've lost a lot of motivated solid intelligent individuals because of a cyst on their ass so so why do we ha what's the reason behind why we have it do you think okay so that's easy um a lot of people get disability and they claim things are service related and genesis is there to, to predict that this is my opinion sorry this is my opinion genesis is there to catch that before they get into whatever branch they're choosing so we don't end up paying them for the rest of their life. So essentially the government or the, the whatever military branch is, is, you know, we don't want to accept liability. I would say so. Yeah. I and, and then, I, I, but, uh, but on the flip side, that eliminates a bunch of potential candidates. Well, that, uh, you know what? Yes. My problem, here, here's, yes. what I, here's what I used to tell uh, applicants. Here's what I used to tell applicants. Whenever it comes to their medical situation, okay? Yeah. Um, I always told them the Marine Corps specifically me, I don't want to put you in positions that I don't know that you're going to be successful at. That's what I always used to tell my applicants. In other words, is the Marine Corps is sure. going to put you through situations, difficult situations, challenging situations, but we're going to give you the tools to come out successful. Mm. If you have any type of medical issues that are legitimately big, we're not giving you the tools for you to be successful. So that yeah. is the reason why, like, if you have a medical issue, like you have to, you have to disclose it because I don't want to put you in a situation that you're not going to be successful. Yeah. But I think in the, the, the big difference right off the rip that I can see with that is, um, one is, is predicated on what I tell you. The other one is, I don't need you to tell me anything. 
right? I can go into Genesis and pull everything I need to. So, you know, what you're saying is like predicated on whether the applicant is like forthright with you, which I got to assume nearly 100% of them aren't. Nah, there's, there's things. There's always going to be like something, even if it's little. They're yeah. not, they're not going to tell you. And maybe it's not that they're trying to be devious, but maybe it's just. Some oh, of them don't know. Yeah, I didn't know that. I didn't think some, of that. Some of them, some of them have haven't had anything wrong with them since they were so young that they don't yeah. know. There but, you go. But then some people, we've had a dude, he managed to get all his vitals. He was homeless. He was like, hey, I want to join. I want to get out of here. But he was like a tweaker. He was weird. Yeah. Um, but he, we sent him to MEPS, passed the ASVAB. We submitted his pre-screen. That's where they look up all the information. And they literally sent back a message saying, do not allow this applicant to come to, into this building. And we were like, what? Whoa. Schizophrenia, 5150 depression, suicidal ideations, suicidal attempts. Genesis, you know, so that's a good catch. Genesis pulled all that. Because that dude, if, if they weren't able to pull that, that dude would have been, maybe he would have been a Marine. That, maybe he would have made it. That's a good catch, right? Or no? That's a good catch. Yeah. But that's yeah, but a pretty, you know, that's you like know an what? exception though. That's not like. That, I, that, that's not something that happens all the time. Sure. I've DQ people for less, but that is an example of why that system is effective. Because we don't want anybody like that with a rifle or to yeah, rely but you know on what? Somebody. You know what? What grinds my gears? Mm. I'm gonna tell you what grinds my gears. Yeah. What grinds my gears because I, just like him, I had applicants like that, and I have applicants. Those were the ones I had two applicants that just come off the of of just at the top of my head. You got recruiter PTSD. Really breaks guys, my heart, man. In. Like I get emotional. I get emotional with these two kids, man, because they walked from the moment they walk into the office. They said, "Sir." My life dream is to become a United States Marine. Something wrong. Was this in Spanish? In Spanish, yes. Can you say it in Spanish for yeah. the Spanish so, viewers? Mi ulti, mi goal en la vida, mi meta en la vida es convertirme en un marín. That's what they told me. And I was like, hell yeah, man. Like, let's make it happen. I talk about two alphas. It sounds that's so much they, better in Spanish. That, that, that's, why, that's why I heard yeah, my heart. Yeah, look, that, two alphas. That's oh, why, that's you're why I heard so hot heart. when you speak Spanish. That's what, no, no, no. And the part that pisses <laughs> me off about one of them, he's that this kid was an influencer in one of the top schools in my, in my, in my, so if I got him, you know, because the hardest thing when you go what to a high school. What do you mean influencer? Like social media? I'm going to tell you right now. I, I'm going to tell you right now. So, cool kid. Was no, he no, Puerto Rican yeah, bad so, bunny? So he was the kid. That as soon as I recruited him, I knew I was gonna get like four or five more more uh, uh, applicants in that school. Hold on, so he didn't pa he he wasn't able to make it. I'm gonna tell you what happened. Well, I, I, a quick question. He he did not. Okay. He did, not. did you give him a pulley shirt anyway? Yes. All right. All okay. Right, cool. Yeah. Hey, of course. Dang. Oh, okay. Come on. Come on. Okay. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. What is this, advertising? What is this, We're JV? advertising. Yeah. Hundred percent. No. No. Actually. Actually. <laughs> Put this on. <laughs> actually. Right. Actually. You know. Um. I. I let until the moment that obviously the maps told me he was disqualified. Yeah. He will come to all of my functions. And I tell him, I bring all your friends. Yeah. I'm gonna call, I go pick him up. I'll br bring all your friends. But Did here's the thing, him? though. Did you feed him? He ate whatever he want. Yeah, you took, care of, you took care of him, huh? Come on, man. Yeah, uh, come on. Yeah, so, but it's Puerto Rico. So you don't let, have me, any let me let me get food. through my story. Let me get through my story. Okay, That's okay. not good. So so what happened was like, what are we so eating? What, hey, Jose's over here like, man, this motherfucker never bought me food. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, hey, fucking bullshit. Hey. Not that fucking shit. <laughs> I bought him pizza at Costco. He yeah. knows it's true, oh, dude. Man. That's some fire pizza though. Yeah. So, so let me let me get let me get through my story because uh, so this what happened, right? This what really grinds my gears. Those two kids. You would think, oh, well, they got disqualified, right? Guess where they're fucking at? Marines. No, in the army. That's your fault. No, they're Damn. it wasn't. They were permanently disqualified. Bumate came back denied. For what? One was for chest, like his chest was concaved or whatever. And the other one was for he had them freaking glasses, like them thick ass freaking glasses. Dumbass things. Bumet, Bumet is a a, a a a medical like his package. Meps disqualified him, but there's still like a secondary revision that happens that they allow him to uh, uh to go seen by different uh, other doctors, and then they have the ultimate decision, right? The Bumets came back denied. As soon as I told these kids, like, man, hey brother, like your Bumet came back denied, like I'm sorry, like you can't you can't become a United States Marine. They start crying. Crying. Right. And so I was like, hey, man, I'm sorry. Literally, the next day, one of them, literally the very next day, called me. He's like, hey, I'm going to MEPS again because the Army took me. And listen in the Army. So it wasn't good enough for the Marines, but was sure fucking good enough for the Army. So it's weird. That's some fucking bullshit. You're like, you're like, ben aquí, niños, I, niños, ben aquí. I've no, heard, man. I've, I've like, heard that, that other branches no mucho. Will, will take, uh, they, 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 they take certain things that we don't take. Yeah. If you, if you qualify for the Marine Corps, you qualify for every branch. Yeah. 
Like that's that's it. Like in and, and that in itself should be enough to tell people like how hard this shit is or how much harder because it's not that hard anymore. I'll be I'm be hundred percent with you. Like no, some, these, hard. some of these kids come back from boot camp and I'm like, you ain't changed at all. Like what the hell? You know, that niggas. Well, it's, it's because it's because they are on a mission right now to end drill instructors' careers. At the depots right mm. now, they are on a mission to, and I'm, ta uh, yes, I'm talking, you know exactly who I'm talking about, know exactly what I'm talking about, walking the decks, you think I don't know, walking the decks absolutely every night, which I commend you for walking the decks, by the way, because mm. that's what good leadership does, right? Walking the decks, but uh, what's not good leadership is purposely walking the decks to end Marines' careers. That's what's not, that's what's not uh, okay. Yeah, you know, and, and I know, listen, we, we need to, we're gonna get this on the podcast in the future, but yeah, I just had a conversation yesterday with a drill instructor absolutely being mistreated, and he's definitely not the only one. Um, and it's, uh, it's a guilty until proven innocent type of uh, yes. environment. And there's, uh, there, are, there are a lot of drill instructors with some some fire under their freaking feet right now. So yep. who's, who's the problem? So the problem is. I know y'all might have to clip this out, but like my, I go straight no, to no, the problem. No, no, no. So yeah. the problem is, I, 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 and again, I'm not there, but I'm gonna tell you from several sources mm. that I've that I've uh, I'll talked to, um, is that drill instructors right now are telling they're being told. You got to train to a certain standard, but as soon as you try to hit that standard and a kid allegates against you, it's what Barry says. You are guilty until proven innocent. And then they will get rid of you and then they will simply push you away. And then now, not only are you putting more stress in that Marine's career, that Marine's family and all that stuff, but you're also putting stress on the other drill instructors that have to pick up for the slack of the drill instructor that got sat down for some, bit, for some uh, uh, bullshit ass reason. That's what the problem is. Well, right yeah, now. I have. And, a, and again, this is not just on one coast, by the way, guys. No, oh, this, this is, is on both coasts. Yeah, one guy I talked to, he's in San Diego, and he has not even been given due process, let alone communication. He hasn't even he he refused an NJP. He has no idea where his stuff is at. He's been sat down. He's he's selected to the next higher grade. They submitted a delay for his promotion. Don't get so too. Don't get too. too yeah, it's going to be very it's, easy to it's identify. Like, they're going to be like, oh, but, no, exactly who that is. Only, it's only certain. You know, but I talked to this guy and I told him <laughs> you need to request mast. Yeah. You need to request mass. You, you, there's all these little ways that aren't even that little sometimes, and they're and we just punish people. They're not being communicated with. They're given due process. It's it's the recruits' word against yours, and there is conflicting statements in this investigation. And you got Marines' careers in your hands, and drill sergeants are terrified. They're terrified. Yeah, yeah uh, they should be. They should be terrified because they want Marines to trade to a standard so that way they can get a, a, a product, but they don't want to face the backlash of what it takes in order for you to develop into that product. But you then know? we wonder why we have fat drill instructors, right? And that's why, Ooh, because... Got, listen, guys, I'm going to tell you this. Mm. I'm, I'm sorry to cut you off, Barry, but we've been talking for about an hour. We still got lots to unpack. How are you looking on time? I'm I'm good. I'm hey, be. so we're going to do... We we originally thought this was going to be a part two. But we're going to do, do a part, part 17. <laughs> we're going to do a part We're going 17. to Puerto Rico. <laughs> and Albert Guys, is married and we aren't. We need to we need to do a part... We need to do a part three on this I need podcast. A phone check. <laughs> uh, we, yeah, we need to do a part three on this podcast because there's still lots to unpack. This is going to be for both applicants that are looking to join the United States Marine Corps. And this is also going to be for Marines that are looking to become uh, uh, recruiters. Yeah. So, Barry, where can people reach for out For the record, I want to say I love Dominicans. I love you guys. Cubans, I love you guys too, okay? Yeah. just I just want to say that. Too. There was a little bit of animosity from the other <laughs> side of the um, room, and it wasn't me. Anyways, <laughs> okay. guys, Instagram, <laughs> at Bull5277. TikTok, at Bull52772. Click the link in my bio. Schedule a call. The call is free, and the change will last you a lifetime. Where can people reach out to you? Uh, Instagram, SSGTPARHM. My last name, Staffs Arm Parm. For now, and that's it. I don't have any other social media. Sweet! I will see you guys in the next one. Make sure that you guys check out any of these videos that are popping up right here. Subscribe, like, and follow. I'll see you guys. <laughs>